Hey everyone, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. Now, if you guys recall, during the epilogue of Avengers Infinity War, not long after Thanos collected all the Infinity Stones and snapped his fingers, Nick Fury transmitted a distress call as he and many other people disintegrated. His transmitter displayed a star symbol on a red and blue background. If you guys haven't figured out what that star represented, well, that star signifies our subject for today's blog, Captain Marvel. Created by writer Roy Thomas and artist Gene Colan, Carol Danvers, aka Captain Marvel, first appeared as an officer in the United States Air Force and a colleague of the Kree superhero Marvel in Marvel Super Heroes number 13, published in, in March 1968. Danvers later became the first incarnation of Ms. Marvel after her DNA was fused with Marvel's during an explosion, giving her superhuman powers. Debuting in the Silver Age of Comics, the character was featured in a self-titled series in the late 1970s, before becoming associated with the superhero teams known as the Avengers and the X-Men. The character has also been known as Binary, Warbird, and Captain Marvel in various points of her history, and over the years, she has been labeled as Marvel's biggest female superhero, and quite possibly, Marvel's mightiest Avenger. In 2012, Danvers' incarnation of Ms. Marvel was the highest-ranked female character on IGN's list of the top 50 Avengers. Plus, Danvers has been featured in other Marvel-licensed products, including video games, animated TV shows, and merchandise such as trading cards. And just recently, Marvel gave us, believe it or not, an origin movie which will tell the backstory of the mighty superheroine, and I think it just could foreshadow her role in the upcoming Avengers movie next month. Released on March 8, 2019, the movie is Captain Marvel. So let's get started. Captain Marvel is an extraterrestrial Kree warrior who finds herself caught in the middle of an intergalactic battle between her people and the Skrulls. Living on Earth in 1995, she keeps having recurring memories of another life as U.S. Air Force pilot Carol Danvers. With help from Nick Fury, Captain Marvel tries to uncover the secrets of her past while harnessing her special superpowers to end the war with the evil scrolls. So, what do I think of the movie? Well, I gotta say, holy mackerel is this movie amazing. And I think this could be one of the best superhero films of the year. But to further explain why I enjoy the movie, let's move on to Mustang Notes. Development on the movie began as early as May 2013, and was officially announced in October 2014, making it Marvel Studios' first female-led superhero movie. Nicole Perlman and Meg LaFoe, hope I'm pronouncing that right, were hired as a writing team the following April after submitting separate takes on the character. The story borrows elements from Roy Thomas's 1971 Kree Scroll War comic book storyline. Robertson Dwarrett soon took over scripting duties, with the remainder of the cast added by the start of the filming. Location shooting began in January 2018, with principal photography beginning that March in California, before concluding in July 2018 in Louisiana. Now, what else do I also have to say about this movie? Well, firstly, I like that the movie pays tribute to the late Stan Lee during the opening studio logo. And speaking of which, 
Stan cameos as a train passenger for this movie. Secondly, the action and fighting scenes are the best parts of the movie for me, including the fight where Just a Girl, by no doubt, plays in the background. Also, one of the flying chase scenes in this movie makes me think of a similar scene from Independence Day. Also, a certain object known as the Tesseract, which is actually a cosmic cube in this movie, makes me think of a similar term from A Wrinkle in Time from last year. Lastly, the setting in 1995 looks absolutely amazing and also very nostalgic since that period was when me and my sister were very little. Also, I think the filmmakers did a great job at capturing the technology from that era. Also, there were a few scenes that were very interesting to me. For example, throughout the movie, Carol tries to remember who she used to be before she got her superpowers and was taken to Hala. Also, the part where Carol crashed into a blockbuster store was pretty interesting too, due to the fact that Blockbuster is becoming an endangered species. However, just recently, I discovered on Facebook that there's only one Blockbuster store left in the whole USA, which is actually located in Oregon. Another thing that was interesting about this movie was the appearance of Ronan, who was the main villain of the 2014 Marvel movie, Guardians of the Galaxy. Anyway, that's all I got for Mustang Notes, so let's move on to the cast. Our main heroine, Captain Marvel, a.k.a. Carol Danvers, is played by Brie Larson. Best known from 21 Jump Street and Kong Skull Island. As mentioned before, Carol is an ex-U.S. Air Force fighter pilot and member of an elite Kree military unit called Star Force, whose DNA was fused with that of a Kree during an accident, imbuing her with superhuman strength, energy projection, and flight. Now, Larson describes Danvers as a believer in truth and justice, and a bridge between Earth and space, who must balance her unemotional Kree side that is an amazing fighter with her flawed human half that is the thing that she ends up leading by. Larson also called Danvers aggressive, quick-tempered, and invasive, which are attributes that help her in a fight but prove to be her character flaws. To me, however, I think Carol is such an amazing superheroine and her fire attacks are just awesome. Also, I think she's a tad similar to other superheroes, like Starfire from the Teen Titans due to her personality, along with Captain America due to this movie set in the past instead of modern day, and Star-Lord from Guardians of the Galaxy since she, like Star-Lord, was abducted from Earth. Also, I've recently discovered that Brie Larson trained for nine months for the role, learning judo, boxing, and wrestling. She also visited Nellis Air Force Base and met with active duty airmen in preparation for the role. Next we have Carol's cat, Goose. Now, in my eyes, this feline pretty much steals the entire show. You see, Goose is no ordinary cat. She's actually a flurkin, which is actually an alien species that resemble a cat. Also, she swallows several people, along with the Tesseract, into her ultimate dimension, and she uses her tentacles several times which spring forth from her nested mouth. Now that's just crazy and awesome. Next we have S.H.I.E.L.D. director Nick Fury, 
played by Samuel L. Jackson, whom I've talked about in my blogs of Incredibles 2 and Astro Boy. In this movie, Nick is a low-level bureaucrat, and he appears without his signature eye patch, as this movie is set before then. Now, Phage explained that Danvers is the first superhero that Nick Fury comes across, which sets him on a path to where the character is in the modern Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. Jackson described Fury at this point in time as a desk jockey, who has not yet become cynical towards bureaucracy, and he learns in the movie that there are superpowered beings who could help S.H.I.E.L.D.'s cause, and that trusting Danvers plays a key role in his development as they become compatriots over the course of the movie. You know, I find it pretty clever how Jackson was able to digitally de-age by 25 years, and believe it or not, this was actually the first time Marvel has done this for an entire movie. Also, I just can't wait to see what Nick's role will be in the upcoming Spider-Man sequel, which will be released this summer. Next we have Talos, aka Keller, played by Ben Mendelsohn, who got to be in Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight Rises, Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, and Ready Player One. And he'll be voicing in Blue Skies, Spies in Disguise. Talos is the shape-shifting leader of the Skrull invasion of Earth, who is actually working undercover within S.H.I.E.L.D. as Nick Fury's boss, Keller. Now, Mendelssohn described Talos' human persona as buttoned up, compared to his more laid-back scroll persona. Fun fact. The makeup and prosthetics necessary to portray Talos took a couple hours to apply. Now, in my opinion, I believe that Talos was a great supporting character, and, of course, his face kind of made me think of the Haunted Mask from the Goosebumps series, as well as Dorian Tyrell's mask form from The Mask. Next, we come to Maria Rambo, played by Lashana Lynch. Now, Maria is one of Carol's oldest friends and a fellow Air Force pilot who goes by the call sign Photon. Now, Maria is a single mother to her daughter, Monica. Lynch described Rambo as resilient and someone that you don't feel like you need to help. Now, in my opinion, Maria is an incredible badass, and I really like the friendship chemistry between her and Carol. Fun fact. Lynch met with pilots who are also mothers, and she was excited to portray a character that the audience could be proud of and could relate to, especially mothers and members of the African-American community, as well as helping to continue a real through lineup for African-American characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe after Black Panther. Also, I think Maria's daughter, Monica, played by Akira Akbar, is equally as great too, especially when she helps Carol with her new uniform colors, and I also can definitely see her, along with Cassie Lang, being great additions to the Young Avengers team. And finally, we have the main villain, yon Rog, played by Jude Law who got to voice the villainous Pitch Black, a.k.a. the Boogeyman, in DreamWorks Rise of the Guardians, and he narrated the 2004 Series of Unfortunate Events movie. Now, yon Rob is the commander of Star Force and Carol's mentor, who trains her to use her new powers. 
Now, Jude Law said that his character is driven by a belief in the divine leadership of the Cree people. So, he's almost a devout warrior, unquestioning, conservative, but inspirational. Law also stated that his character has a special relationship with Carol Danvers, whom he views as a mentee, which becomes a source of tension in the film with the other members of Star Force. And now for my final words. Overall, Captain Marvel is a fantastic movie. The story is very thrilling, the action is awesome, and the setting in the mid-90s is very nostalgic due to it making me think back to my childhood. Plus, the main hero is absolutely amazing, and I just know that she'll be equally as awesome while helping the other Marvel heroes defeat Thanos and save humanity. Also, Nick Fury, along with Talos, were great supporting characters. Maria, along with her daughter Monica, were equally as memorable. And Jan Rog, while he was a great mentor character, he was a surprising villain. So... I highly recommend you guys check this movie out if you guys are, are Marvel fans and you want to get hyped up for the upcoming Avengers movie. As for my rating, I give this movie a full 100%. Well, that's all for today. Be sure to tune in again next time. Mustang Power.